go to. Echo! Echo! Hello, friends! Welcome back to Saturday Evenings Posted Mostly Presents General Chaos, episode number 17 we're on now? I think so. Okay. All right. Let's just see if we can do something about your echo. <laughs> without doing something about your echo. <laughs> Let's see if that worked. One, two. Nope. You hear your echo. I don't. I hear my echo. Okay, well, at least it's a start. How bizarre. Of course, we start with technical difficulties. Um, I'm your host, Trevor Stewart, 1308, and we are here with the associate producer, Kat. Uh, and we'd like to say hi to Master Rasta420 and Retro Future Now in the chat. Have a happy lurk there, Retro. Mm -hmm. uh, today's pre-rolls are brought to you by The Hidden Leaf, downtown Charlottesville. Uh, 105 West Main Street, Suite 200, above the bricks of the downtown mall, between 10,000 villages and Hamilton's, where the only thing better than their bud is their customer service, and they have the lowest prices in town, according to my own private research, which is probably very highly biased. Ooh, Retro Future is gonna be playing some uh, is gonna be playing some music live uh, shortly, so he'll be he'll be lurking here and there. Nice. Yeah. I'll try to I'll try to get in your stream and lurk while you're uh, while you're doing your DJ thing. So one of the neat things that Hidden Leaf has started doing recently, other than all of their really cool, uh, other than all of their really cool uh, events, mm. which you can find on the website, uh, check website for t event times. Um, but they've, uh, they have, uh, board games up in the smoking lounge now. So, you know, you can get a group of people together, go get some good bud, chill, smoke, and play a game of Clue. Or you can get your not-such-good friends together, go get a whole lot of bud, and settle in for a game of Monopoly. The reason I say don't play with your good friends is because Monopoly will make enemies out of friends. So play that game with friends you don't mind losing. Oh, yeah. People that you're like... <laughs> <laughs> People, you're ready to push out of your social circle. <laughs> Smooth. <laughs> uh, Peanut Gallery just texted me saying, get some good bud with some good buds. There you go. And you know what? <laughs> I'm going to pitch that line to them later today, too. <clears throat> they, uh, I, I, I'd like to point out that they don't uh, technically sponsor me. Uh, they do give me free gifts. Uh, 
but they don't technically sponsor any of the advertising I do for them. I do that because I, as an individual, and we as a company, support what they're doing. Uh, building community and a safe third space for everyone to enjoy uh, being able to get high. Mm. Um, <clears throat> they, we, they don't necessarily uh, agree with all of the opinions and statements that we make. We have political and social opinions, and they are a business. So they don't necessarily have that. They don't necessarily uh, endorse everything we say, uh, mm. but we endorse them as a company. I think that's uh, yeah, that works. Also, uh, we'd like to shout out Firehouse Organics. Uh, a craft cannabis farm here in Virginia. Uh, and one of the one of the places where you can get their fine products is at the uh, Friday farmers market pop-up at the Hidden Leaf, which starts at 6 p.m. on Fridays. Uh, and Firehouse Organics has some of the, uh, in my opinion, has the best premium uh, and exotic weeds around, in my personal opinion. And they make some of the uh, best premium um, concentrates. Mm. And they make some of the best premium snow caps, which is when you take weed, inject it with rosin, with, you know, hash rosin, and then roll it in concentrated powdered weed. Or THC, not powdered weed, powdered THC. And it is delicious and good. Um, am I forgetting? Oh, uh, you can find Firehouse Organics on Instagram. Uh, you can find Hidden Leaf online. Um, am I forgetting anything for the ad read here? Um, Lockpick says, I don't I believe so. Oh, okay. Okay, good. Lockpick says, I missed the start of stream. I was too busy under hot, steamy water washing my balls. Lockpick. I'll... Never mind. All right. That's I just too he easy. He was listening beforehand. He didn't miss that much. Just too easy. Uh, my future ex-husband. And now I'm going to be distracted thinking about him in the shower all episode. No, you're not. Because I, I can promise I think I have nightmare fuel to distract you back. Oh, dear. Dear Glob. I have why? not. I have not put the nightmare fuel in the, in the listing. But if I need to, I will. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> see now but now I'm just curious Master Rasta <laughs> says I can send the videos I secretly took I'd really appreciate that uh, Lockpick says it takes two hands too one to wash my balls the other to pull my hair and slap me a few times <laughs> Uh, I'm capable of that. <laughs> mm 
mm -mm. no, no, Trevor. No, don't say it. Whatever was in your head just now. <laughs> Secretly, he was standing right there in the tub with me. <laughs> This devolved quick. It's Saturday morning. Of course it did. <laughs> There's nothing secret about giving stage directions while filming. You know, and something I've often wondered. When they're filming... And they have to give stage directions in videos like that. But you don't hear them. Do you think that they're redoing it, the dub, in post? But also, if they're redoing the dub in post, never mind. Never. Who's doing Foley? That's what I want to know. Who's doing the Foley work for that? Someone not distractible and very talented. <laughs> Lockpick says you can hear them in some videos if you turn it up enough. I've been on set for that kind of filming. It's a lot of hand directions. But the way the mics are set up makes the most difference. Okay. <laughs> Handling audio for porn is actually no joke. I believe that. I believe that. <laughs> audio, I mean... We audio guys take it... Support, editing porn is done in post-coital. Oh, <laughs> peanut gallery. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. Uh, so us sound guys are, are, I mean, we take our thing, or we take our job really seriously when we're doing that. It's a, I mean, it can be, you know, it can be the most inane thing, but if you've got a real sound guy on it, they are going to treat every, you know, every minor announcement by, uh, by a town council, they're gonna treat it as a stadium performance, mm -hmm. big budget, uh, concert. I mean, if you're there, you sound. It doesn't matter what is happening. You don't want to hear that the sound was crap. Right. If you're doing some sort of film, you could care less what everyone's saying about how the actors acted. Yeah. You just want to hear that they could be heard. Right. Um. Also, knowing sound as I do, I do know how you can set up microphones uh to exclude certain sounds, certain areas. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Microphones have a, a pickup uh, range. Like these have uh, a cardioid pickup range, which comes out of the, you know, out of the bulb, out of the, and goes out sort of like this, in this mm -hmm. sort of, and uh, they mostly only pick up what's in front of them. Um, if you're behind one of these kind of microphones, you know, on the other side, it really doesn't pick up much. Um, and they make, and I'm, you know, I'm pretty sure that they make boom mics and shotgun mics very much like that. Very, very almost monodirectional, so they only pick up what they're aiming at. Uh, I, I have no idea what kind of sound equipment they use on set for that, though. What, uh, what, lockpick? 
what kind of equipment setup did they have? I mean, what what caliber gear were they working with? Um, I the one of the reasons I know so much about miking, uh, mic position is because the internship at the recording studio I did, they were, uh, they were located, uh, out in, um, in Ashland, Virginia, and there's a very large, uh, bluegrass scene out that direction, which means there are a lot of band shows. <laughs> And so I learned how to effectively exclude a banjo from a microphone just by how I, just by the direction I point the microphone. That's the thing about banjos. You don't mic them. You don't. They bleed into everybody else's mic. They are almost, they are one of the hardest instruments to make sound good from a, from a technical point of view, from a technician point of view. So it sounds like you kind of have to lock the banjo player in a room by themselves. Done that. Definitely have done that before. We we've, we've put the banjo player in the vocal, in the vocal uh, um, booth, closed the doors and mic'd them. Banjos are audio herpes. Yes, they are. <laughs> Snare drum is harder. Lockpick says snare drum is harder. I I disagree because again you you can mic the other drums and let the snare bleed through. But the snare will mostly only bleed through to the other drums. If you're using one of those plexiglass shields or if you're using if you're using um if you're mm -hmm. using your mics t not pointed at the, uh, only cause, cause you'll only hear the reed. You need to hear the thump as well. A proper snare alone takes two mics to sound right. Yeah. One from the top, one from the bottom, one to get the reed and one to get the, uh, thump. But in a larger band setting, you don't worry that much about what the snare itself sounds like. Uh, whereas, whereas you do worry about what the drums on the whole sound like. Uh, usually, usually, if you're doing a whole band, I didn't have a lot of experiencing experience miking drums just because there weren't a lot of drums in the in bluegrass. Um, but usually, usually what we did is we put up the we put up the plexiglass shield, or we do one drum at a time. I remember one guy. One guy did one. We did just did one drum at a time. We'd go through the entire set and record just this, like, just the snare, just the tom, just the kick, just the low tom, just the mid tom. It was like, wow. But he was a perfectionist of a music producer, and he was making a song specifically to give to his girlfriend as he proposed to her. Uh. So it was like, okay, I get it. I get it. 
I see what you're doing. Um, but yeah, a lot of times, if we were doing the whole band, we wouldn't do the whole drum set. We'd do a couple of pencil mics up top. We'd get a couple of... Uh, we'd get a mic on the kick, a mic on two snare on two tom on the two low toms a mic on the high tom a mic on the high hat a mic on the ride or crash depending on what was used most um and a and a mic on the snare for the thump and let the reed bleed through I think, think that's how we did it. This was uh, three lifetimes ago now. It's a long time ago. We also used uh, SM57s on the drums. Except for the pencil condensers up top. We didn't use drum mics, specifically. We didn't use those little clip-on drum mics. Unless, uh, the, unless the artist brought them with them. Although we did... I think we might have used some of those little clip-on mics for piano a couple of times. <laughs> Man, we would mic the heck out of a piano just to get the full tone of it. We'd put... We'd either put a, a 57, 157 on the left or right, or we'd put pencil condensers on the left and the right. Uh, you know, of the, <laughs> of the, um, string, you know, where the strings are, uh, so that you could get that, you could get that stereo feel, and, you know, we'd pan them to the left and to the right. Or, occasionally, when I really wanted to mess with people, I'd pan them opposite. So that you'd hear the higher notes in your left ear and the lower notes in your right ear. Uh. I only did that with my music. I only did that with the stuff that I was doing for, for Nick Work Entertainment. I didn't do that for... I didn't do that for anything professional because that would have been... That wouldn't have been right professionally. Mm. Artistically, yes. Professionally, no. But then we'd also we'd also put extra mics on the piano to pick up ghost tones. So as if the piano were facing you not like you were behind the pianist. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Uh, uh, that's what the uh, peanut gallery just texted me that. Um, but yeah, we, we put extra mics on it to capture ghost tones and um, and the full range of sound produced by the mach by the instrument. It's a word I'm looking for and can't get to there. Well, that was an interesting journey down uh, <laughs> down microphone lane. Yes. Okay, see, now that's what... confusing me this thing is 
I cannot help with that. I know. I mean, I can always make things worse, but I cannot make it better. Okay. All right. All right, I don't, I think only I hear your echo currently. I mean, I think you might hear an echo, but. So let's move on to take a look at some stuff. Okay. Yeah, so. There you go, there's your first story of the day. First story of the day. <clears throat> okay, why did it want to go there? Because it does. Yeah, I, just... You want I can find a different site that's got that story? Huh? So if you want, I can find a different site that has that story. Oh, gosh darn it. Yeah, it's asking me. Give me a moment. Go on to the next one, I'll find it. Oh, you... It seems to it seems to be behind a paywall progress. Yay. Oh, that's easy. Alright. So Virginia Zoo hosting its own Eras tour with uh Taylor Swift themed night. Yeah, oh, yes. Let me let me do this real quick. So you guys can see this. There we go. Uh, yeah. Virginia Zoo hosting its own Eras Tour with Taylor Swift themed night. Um, the Virginia Zoo in Norfolk, in Norfolk, Virginia. Snakes, foxes, bears, and tigers are all animals that happened to be featured in Taylor Swift songs. So is that where they're coming at this from? Mm-hmm. The night is expected to be something out of suburban legends. Attendees are... <laughs> really? Really? That is some hyperbole. There's a reason I sent you this story. Wow. I mean, that is that is some hyperbole. Attendees are encouraged to make the friendship bracelets and show off their style for the costume contest. Okay. The night will be full of music provided by Melody and Company Entertainment. Who's Melody and Company? I don't know. That is interesting. Uh, and a variety of activities, animal encounters, friendship bracelet making, a themed vendor market, a costume contest, photo opportunities at each zoo era. Yep. Food trucks, bouncy houses, and of course, a visit to the zoo. Guests are encouraged to come dressed as their favorite Ter Taylor Swift era. Mm -hmm. And attendees 21 plus will also be able to indulge in limited edition specialty themed cocktails like Loverberry Delight and Fearless Golden Fairy Tale. This seems like a very <sighs> This is either going to be very very bland and boring mm -hmm. or exceptionally ill advised. And for their sake, I hope it's bland and boring. Yeah. There are so... Mm -hmm. 
I just see so much that could go wrong here. Hmm. Yes. I there's 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 so many things that could go wrong, and there is potentially just just the very barest chance that it could go okay. Yeah. And as the peanut gallery just pointed out, whoever thought this up was not the swiftiest, but think themselves a true swiftiest. Well put. Well put, peanut gallery. I, I just... Has anybody checked with Taylor Swift to see if this is okay yet? <laughs> like, I don't see her having a problem with the idea, but, like... I would hope they have. I would really, really, really hope that they have. However, I know the way that... The way that institutions around here operate. They operate from a, and it's easier to ask forgiveness uh, uh, position. Yep. And I could see someone at the zoo saying, well, why should she have a problem? This isn't, you know, why would anybody have a problem with this? Right. But it's if they don't have permission, it's unauthorized use of name and likeness. Oops. I really You're hope. Not. Huh? I clicked on something and it decided to start playing music. So oh, I was okay. yelling at it. Uh -huh. I really, I really do hope that they have, uh, that they have the correct permissions for this. Cause. So do I. I mean, really. It seems like a lot of fun to me. Mm -hmm. I would, you know, well, not fun for me, but like, I think that the people who would enjoy this would really enjoy this. And I think the, I think the under, the under 18s set, you know, the, the, the 10 to 16 set will really enjoy it. Yes. And I think that that is great. Which means I really do hope that they have the permissions that they need. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, mean, I don't... If, if you've got... If they've got music and stuff that they're spinning things off of, it'll be an encouragement for the older siblings, the older cousins, the older whoever, to be like, alright, I'm taking you to this, because you're really gonna like it, and I'm not going to be quite so... <laughs> it's not gonna be quite so bad for me. Right. Although that also depends on how this entertainment company handles yeah. it. You know? Um... I'm sure that they've paid their ASCAPs and are allowed to play the music. Mm hmm Um, but do they have the... Do they have the stuff to make this a big enough deal? Or, or is it gonna feel like like it's done by the local library shopping at Dollar Tree? Kind of. Or is it, yeah, is it going to be one guy with a PA, couple of loudspeakers, and, uh, you know, and a cheap mixing board? You know. It's just one of those things where it's like, I could see... I could see how this could be really sad. It can, I could it see can how it could be... Ways. Huh? So it can go so many several ways. Right. 
I've seen things like this in in Orange and Louisa, mm -hmm. and even Gordonsville. Just the sad, sad events. That, I mean, they didn't have a zoo behind them, but I also kind of think of zoos as depressing places. Mm. I mean, it's just, it's neat to look at animals, but it's kind of like messed up to be incarcerating them, like for no reason other than we think they're interesting. For most of them, yes. For some of them, it's right now it's the only place they're surviving, period. I mean, Which that's is true. Sad. Yeah. So, yeah, like it's. Zoos don't put me in the most festive mood to begin with. Yeah. All right. On to the next bit of something now this <laughs> this lock pick I thought you might have an opinion about because it just shows you the kind of truck drivers around here. I will be honest, the, the little caption right above the story itself also shows, oh my god. So, like, my question, though, is how... Oh. How did it get there? Um, if you go, if you go down to the uh, story, the the link right below your picture on on the chat, we have supposedly the the bare bones outline of how it happened. We don't have why it happened. Uh, it, this is an update because the day of everything happening, they're like, right hey, now it's unknown how this happened. And it was like, it, it just stayed. We don't know how this happened. We just know that it did happen and the road is going to be shut down for the next several, several hours. So, you, okay, he was carrying gravel. At least that's what it looks like. Right? Um, honestly, where's my 12? There it is. Um, he was and the bed was empty when the crash happened. Yes. The, the cab continued on and then stopped, obviously. Because it's separated from the bed of the tractor. Tra Obviously. <laughs> yes. What led up to it actually hitting the sun? I mean, okay. There, there's some question on why he was driving down the road with the bed raised up. Because obviously that's where those those dump bed tractor trailers. Oh, okay, so okay. A, a huge hydraulic ramp. Okay, so that is not just a that bed did not just that that's not like a regular stay on the ground. That was a dump truck bed on a tractor trailer, and part of what happened is it was up. Uh huh. Now, if you look at the picture, that piece that's hanging down from the tractor trailer, that's, that's that hydraulic ram. Or whatever, whatever the truckers actually call it. I was going to say, is it how we know it was a mail truck? 
No, because we can actually see it on the road. If it was a mail truck, it'd be long gone. We'd never see it again. The demon out here does not do what it's supposed to do. It vanishes. So, they really, they really, okay. I've always had a passion for technology and understanding how things work. Accelerated degrees in cybersecurity. ECPI University. After taking. Oh, we got a dirty you too. delays continue. Hours after a tractor trailer bed took out a highway sign and then forced all westbound lanes to close. Yeah, it's incredible. Take a look at the damage for yourself. The bed was up. There's no information on where the truck was going. Could remove it, and now state police. The driver's been charged with reckless driving. Desiree Montia joining us live from VSP headquarters. With but they're still trying to figure out what on earth happened. Huh. Here's the, the, the kicker for people traveling in the area. Yeah. This happened at 9 in the morning. Oh, man. The That part of the interstate did not reopen until 6.30 that night. Oh, man. Not cool. Not cool. Not cool. All right. But, yeah. I really, really am curious. Okay. Yeah. Anybody that wants to go look, they've got some very interesting video of getting the truck down from the sign, which involved <laughs> turning the sign posts down so it could fall. <laughs> oh. So you put this up here because you wanted me to read the headline. I put that up there so you could read the headline because the headline is just... I mean, seriously, it says it all. Exactly. January, <laughs> January 6th crimes did happen. Court cases, video, and thousands of pages of evidence prove. Just saying, man. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> Yes. We are in ad break. We will be back from ad break in seconds. We are back from ad break. Hello, welcome back from ad break. I mean, we all know that the January 6th crimes really did happen. That happened. But... We've been being gaslit or attempted to be being gaslit into believing that it, it wasn't what it was. And it just, it astounds me that anybody buys into it, buys mm -hmm. into the lies about it. We all watched it happen like almost in absolute real time like almost being streamed you know mm -hmm. all right um. all right next up Something from the AP. Let's get you out the way. A child was reported missing. A TV news helicopter crew spotted him on the roof playing hooky. Yes. Dang. <laughs> Dang. I mean, man. Yeah, I thought I, I thought I got popped for playing hooky that one time. That is, uh, wow, man. That kid's never going to get away with anything. No, no, he's not. Wow. Wow. Okay, so I bet you the kid is now... Okay, so what happened? Uh... The nine-year-old boy left his Brooklyn apartment around 7 a.m. Thursday, but did not show up for school. The boy's parents called the police, who put out a description of the missing child, including the orange tie he was wearing. 
the CBS station sent a helicopter to the scene and reporter Dan Rice spotted the boy on the rooftop of his family's building. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. As my pilot, Eric Ross, and I were circling around the building, we came across a person sitting in a chair over here on the rooftop. We zoomed in with the camera. It appeared to be the child that fit the description of the missing child. Oh, that poor kid. That poor kid is going to have persecution and paranoia complexes. Like, they are going to feel like they are being watched all the time now. And if, if they don't, then later on, at, at some un, unhappy time, there's going to come out the picture and the story of, hey, do you remember when? We have news footage of remember when, do you? Right. <laughs> That's good, man. Yeah. Man. Is it, as someone else who has news footage of remember when, I feel his pain. Mm, I thought you would. <laughs> and remember, that's part of the RRG. Finding the... Uh, news footage of, or the, well, the footage of <laughs> Remember When. <laughs> All right. Yep, the next one's for me. <laughs> yes! I saw, whoa! No, I didn't. I saw the you thing about that? the I saw the thing about the uh, meth candy. Meth yeah, being given no. out as candy, but though. <laughs> methamphetamine disguised as shipment of watermelons seized at U.S. Mexico border in San Diego. Oh my God. Oh and my the picture. God. Oh the picture. my God. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> wow, that is the jankiest watermelon I have ever seen. That's that's the watermelon that you make when you hear it looks like an oval and it's got green, green, dark green and light green stripes running from end to end. That's what you do. Wow, that when is. You look I mean, I mean, from a yeah. distance. If they'd have had less of the fake ones and more of the real ones from a distance, maybe you could get away with it. Or if you've got, you know, Mr. Magoo doing your custom search. Right? But jeez. I will say... It does look like that box is pretty empty. Like maybe they took out a whole bunch of real ones. That's what I just think. to get to the bottom. That's what I think. That's what I think. That's what I would think anyway. Like that's what I would do. Is I would have put the fake ones under a whole bunch of real ones. I wonder if it was drug dogs that caught it. Probably. So, yeah, we, 1,220 we, we packages. Oh, my but God. That's not a small number, no. No. And that, they don't say how they found it, though. Oh, my goodness. Watermelon meth. I just... <laughs> I'm sorry, the first... He's doing that, that phrase. Have we reached the point where the drugs need to be flavored now, like pixie sticks? Well, I mean, the weed is. All right. 
that's effectively a vegetable. It, it deserves to be flavored in whatever flavors it comes up with. I mean, that's fair. <laughs> Scientists make tissue of living animals see-through. Yes. Yes. Alright. I will be honest, I, I saw a clip of this, effectively this, on a YouTube video, and they were, they were pointing out that the, the stuff that makes your fingers bright yellow when eating um, a certain brand of chips or, or corn puffs, this is what they're using on the mice to make them transparent. Researchers made the skin on the skulls, abdomen, and abdomens of live mice transparent by applying to the areas a mixture of water and common yellow food coloring called tartrazine. Mm hmm The living skin is a is a scattering medium like fog it scatters light which is why it cannot be seen through the combination of the yellow dye a molecule that absorbs most light especially blue and ultraviolet light with skin which is scattering medium individually these two things block most light from getting through them but when we put them together, we are able to create transparency out the, uh, uh, we are able to achieve transparency of mouse skin, said O, oh, who with colleagues conducted the study. I, I mean, it does make sense when he, when, when seeing that, that makes absolute sense. Yes. Ah, ha, the magic happens because dissolving the light absorbing molecules in water changes the solution's refractive index, a measure of the way the substance bends light in a way that matches the refractive index tissue components like lipids. The dye molecules reduce, in essence, don't do that. In essence, the dye molecules reduce the degree to which light scatters in the skin, like dissipating a fog bank. Or, yeah. I'm curious to see if I can make the skin on my finger trans transparent this way. I'm going to go with probably not the skin on your fingers too thick because they use specifically thin areas like the skull and the abdomen. Hmm. Uh, I wonder I'm betting if I have thin enough skin. Huh? What? Oh, so you, you, Probably couldn't do your fingers, but you might be able to do like the inside of your elbow. Okay. Maybe. Uh, I might be able to do like this part. Like here. Everything, my arms, the skin on my arms is pretty thick. Even on the insides of my elbows. But I think, like, right in here might not be too terribly yeah. thick. <clears throat> and the lipids are much closer to the to the uh, surface there. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Okay. Moving on to something a little locally politicky. Mm-hmm. Mayor announces retirement of city attorney. Uh-huh. 
Charlottesville City Attorney Jacob Stroman has retired as of September 3rd, according to a release. Mayor Juan Diego Wade announced the retirement Wednesday morning. Mr. Stroman has decided to retire. He has been exonerated from the claims that prompted his administrative leave. What claims were those? The city council appear, uh, appreciates his service as city attorney, including his work on the development of the city, blah, blah, blah. Uh, defending the city in litigation, including the ongoing lawsuit defending the development code. Huh. Mm -hmm. What? So... Stroman um, was put on administrative leave in April pending an investigation into an unspecified complaint. Mm hmm Huh. Do we... Do we know anything about what that complaint could have been? Um, I'm looking at the other the other one that you couldn't read. Oh, was that the that was the thing the the what the other one was? Yeah. Okay. No, we don't have, we don't know exactly what the complaint was. Hmm. Interesting. Um, we just know that there were complaints filed against him in some capacity back in April. And he's been on leave since then. They had to bring in other people to do the attorney job. Interesting, interesting. Uh, there was another, there's an assistant city attorney that was placed on administrative leave at the same time, and it was fired prior to this particular investigation being closed. Hmm. But we also know that he was the city attorney in Chesapeake, previous to him coming to Charlottesville. And he was forced to resign there as well. I wonder. I wonder if there's any information on that. Um, not in these particular articles, but something I can go poking at and see what comes up. Okay, that'd be an interesting thing to follow up on. Um, you one, know. The one vague, the one vague thing is that uh, Stroman's legal interpretations were frustrating and not helpful. Now, the way that's phrased, it could be uh, frustrating and unhelpful from the point of view of doing things that shouldn't be doing, or it could be frustrating and unhelpful from the point of view of telling people that you're going to screw up and you can't do what you want. This is the law. So that's that's an interesting one to dig into and figure out. Hopefully, that would that that yeah, yeah, that would be interesting. Uh, yeah. Huh. I worry about looking too deeply at anybody in the area at this point, just because I worry that peel back any of these layers and what we will see is the rot underneath. Mm. And I can understand that. I feel, I feel as if I am not sure Mm. This is the beginnings of... This could be the beginnings of... Uh, 
an overactive imagination leading to problematic paranoia. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Like, so I want to be... I, I mean, on the other hand, if this guy is... If this guy is a problem, you know... Mm -hmm. well, sounds like problem, sounds interesting, but the, the thing to note is that he's not, he's not a Charlottesville person. He came from Chesapeake. Which is, for me, it's an interesting thing to be like, oh, okay. Yeah. Let's, I mean, let's take a look and see if something shakes loose. <laughs> Oh, man. <clears throat> you know, at some point we may have to decide that we are investigative investigative journalists. Even though I keep denying we're journalists. I mean, we're not. We're snoops. There's a difference. We are two nosy, opinionated people. That's what we are. Aren't those journalists? No, journalists aren't opinionated. Right. So we're not journalists. We're just nosy and opinionated. We're nosy, opinionated people. And we share our nosy opinions with everybody else when we can. There you go. <laughs> I like this. I like this. Hundreds cruise Philadelphia streets in the 15th <laughs> annual Philly Naked Bike Ride. <laughs> I, I, I had to throw that in there for you and Lockpick. So you, you, you all can plan a, a, a beautiful outing next year. Hundreds of people in various states of undress cruise the streets of Philadelphia to cheers from onlookers Saturday evening in the 15th annual Philly Naked Bike Ride. It really is the city of brotherly love. Yep. Oh, we skipped one. You'll have to go back up in a moment when you're done with this. Okay. I, I... Organizers said the ride wasn't limited to only bicycles, but welcomed all forms of human tra powered transportation. Uh... uh... They also point to a code of conduct that bars any kind of physical or sexual harassment. That's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. I'm picturing somebody on uh, on a unicycle juggling. Now, see, okay, see, having ridden a bicycle naked. Mm hmm it is actually not fun. That seat chafes. It sticks. It grabs. It pinches. It chafes. That seat is not fun naked. That's where you cover the seat with something else. And don't leave it as vinyl. Or plastic. Whatever. I mean, a proper snare. Oh, I read that a while ago. Never mind. Yes, yes. I was, I was really hoping for a funny comment, but oh, we're in ad break. I'm guessing. It's okay. Uh... No, he can hear us. Ah, there we go. Now, I'm guessing what it was, was retro. Started. Yeah. Cool. So, I, I just to... lurked over there. Did it. Yes. Uh, All right. All right. So. Scroll, scroll back up and click the link right under the watermelon.
this one. The one from NPR? Yes, and it opened in the wrong place again. Of course it does. It does that. They always do that. There we go. Rachel Treisman, well-written headline. <laughs> After months on the run, a murderer suspect falls through the ceiling and into custody. Yes. Authorities got a lucky break when, murder, when the murder suspect they'd been pursuing for months fell, so to speak, into their laps through the ceiling of a building where he'd been hiding. U.S. Marshals Service said agents captured 20-year-old Dario Wilkerson on Monday after months after warrant for his arrest on charges of first degree to murder and reckless endangerment was issued in connection with the fatal shooting in Memphis, Tennessee. Can they add a further reckless endangerment for falling through the ceiling and onto the people below? Yes. Oh, ho, ho, ho. official said Wilkerson. So he was hiding in this residence, mm -hmm. and the law enforcement agents went to search it, and he went to hide in the attic. Mm -hmm. Except he fell through the attic, like right there in front of the. <laughs> he literally fell into custody. That's not that hyperbole. That's literal. This. What? Um, you think he's just gonna drop out of the sky? <laughs> Thud. Yes, Chief, I do. The Apple Brooklyn Gang comes to mind hearing that. I mean, it just, that's, that's just how it, like, yeah. <laughs> like, that's, whoever wrote that one, well written. Yes. All right. How many more do we have? We have one more. One it involves more. Darth Vader. Huh? We have one more. It involves Darth Vader. <laughs> German warship blasts. Go away. No, we will not go away. We are here. We stay here. There was no deeper message behind the warship's song choice as it cruised through London. <laughs> the heck you say? <laughs> Dun, 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 dun. Oh, I say, here come the Germans. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, it's the Blitzkrieg all over again. I mean, seriously. <clears throat> wow, I sounded like Shaggy there for a moment, Scoob. <laughs> I mean, how do you, how do you not take a meaning from a warship, a German warship, blasting the Imperial Death March as it floats through your town? Okay, wait. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, here we go. What? Did you get further down than anybody else played? Oh, I just realized. You can't hear that. That's why. Okay. Okay, now you should be able to hear this. Okay.
dude, Vader needs to lay off the donuts. Uh, I've been I don't specifically know what that collecting is. Darth Vader for over 25 years. The first time I saw Star Wars in the theater, I was That's about a, six years a old. commercial in the middle of an article. Uh, in, in the middle of an article. I was hoping. I... Okay. <sighs> okay, that dude is. Yeah. Um. I think he might be my new hero. I mean, I'm 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 down with the Darth Vader merch. Yeah. And the man has the man has the full Vader costume. Actually very good Vader costume. Props to him. That is mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. That is way... I thought that somebody, some, you know, news outlet had just stuck one of their people in a Vader costume and was doing a bit. Nope. And I was... Nah, that's that dude is being... Well, that... Right on, dude. Right on, bro. That's awesome. But I mean <laughs> The commander can choose the music freely The Navy said in a statement Thursday The choice of music has no deeper message Other video recording of, Recorded the warship The bronze flag Playing London Calling By The Clash Oh. Uh, oh. Okay. Wow. Um. Okay. See, this makes me think. That who, the Braunschweig, uh -huh. they are some, yeah, I don't even know. I don't even know what they are, but that is how, mm -hmm. uh, I just, mm-hmm, okay. It's the second trip to this particular ship with its captain has made to London. Yes. Thing is, London Calling by The Clash is not. Yeah. That's not exactly a London friendly song. No. 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 No, that's not like. You know, that's not a. Yeah. Ah, uh, just, I, I mean, I mean, maybe the, maybe they don't know that. Maybe English isn't a solid enough language for whoever's choosing for that to be there, but. I mean, it could entirely be one. All right, granted, this is a German boat. But they could have the same kind of stereotypical American blindness to the music and the lyrics of the music, and go, oh, "This mentions London and calling." So this is this is a good thing to play for visiting London, and pay no further attention to the lyrics and realize this is not a good idea. Right, we're calling in on London. Let's play London Calling. Exactly, and be like, "That's that's it." Uh, I, 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 
I don't know, man. I can see Americans being that classless, but Germans? What? Right, so you have no sense of the humor? Is London calling and we are calling on London? C is funny. Just, I mean, yeah, see. We, we can't be, the Americans can't be the only ones to have that particular issue. So either, either it has to happen in other countries too, or the German commander is half American. We are sorry. We apologize for our commander. He is half American. We don't talk about that side of his family. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I'm just surprised at the level of cultural insensitivity or general insensitivity. That's, I mean, yeah, I guess Germans aren't known for being the most sensitive people, but... Well, not that level of faux pas. I'm, I'm willing to believe there wasn't necessarily a deeper meaning, and it was more a case of, this is dark, scary music, and we're going to do bad German, so we're going to play the dark, scary music because everybody expects us to play the dark, scary music. I, yeah, I think I do. I think the Darth Vader. I think the the Imperial March was probably a response to the to what the, you know the reaction to them coming in on London calling. They're like, all right, see, we have sense of humor. We make fun of ourselves too. Yes. See, is Darth Vader theme, and we are big and scary like Darth Vader. Yes, I can totally see that. Not like Chewbacca, <laughs> Vokey. I just, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Yeah. I guess I can see that. I can, at a stretch, I can see that. It seems like, that seems like the kind of cultural insensitivity that would have been uh, something that would have been considered of uh, Prussian slash German uh, nobility and, and upper classes mm -hmm. before uh, before World War one. <laughs> it does not seem like the kind of German behavior that you saw post World War II. No. Although there is a a a growing strength in the far right movements in Germany again. And that's... See, that that is why I, I think that... That's why I think that Germans would need to be more sensitive to... more culturally sensitive. You know? You would think. You really would think. Yeah. Oh. Bringing to mind battles and stuff, I have a report for you on the, the Pokemon tournament last weekend. Ah, uh, yes! Let us hear what happened at the Poke tournament. Uh, we ended up with a total of nine players. All right. Which for, for a cup tournament is pretty good because the Jefferson Gym is pretty small. Okay. Uh, I did not place in the top four. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. Oh, I'm not. I, that's that's pretty much a standard thing for me. I am not <sighs> a serious enough player to place in the top four. Unless there are only four players. <laughs> um, 
We had, we had several visitors that came from our town. We had a couple that came down from the D.C. area to come play in our little tournament. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, that's pretty fun. Um, so the, uh, the, the first place winner was a player named Out of Pocket. <laughs> um, who was a visitor. Second place was Poppin' Bubbles, who, who was one of our people. Third place was Cruz, who was Out of Pocket's mom. <laughs> and fourth place was one of our people, Best Cat Dad Ever. Fourth place was what? <laughs> best Cat Dad Ever. Ha <laughs> ha, nice. Yes. So, you know, we, we had two of our locals place in the top four and, and two out of towners place in the top four. Well that's good. That's that sounds yes. like uh that sounds like pretty successful club tourney. It was. It was and you know <sighs> pardon me. They were they were anxious enough to maybe come back to other matches that we do on a monthly basis and maybe I mean I left um Cruz was planning on setting up with one of our, our gym leaders on learning how to play the trading card game itself. So they might come back for that at some point, too. Okay. That's pretty cool. Yes. Well, all right. Uh, I think that's uh, that's pretty much it for us for this episode. Mm hmm Um... <coughs> Next week... Uh, we are going to be working on those, um, what I call popular media ideas mm -hmm. that, uh, that Darth Dragonus has. The, yeah. uh, he, he's got a theory about, about TV shows who have season four as their best season. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if he's got a full-formed theory, but he's got a list of. Yes. He's putting together a list of. He's also working on putting together some some of the very complex uh, timelines from some of the most complex timeline shows that we we know. Yeah. Um. So. That will be, uh, yeah, next weekend. Uh, it's going to be probably more than one episode to get through everything because it's a lot. I mean, if nothing else, it's it's something that we could do every every other weekend. Yeah, you know, pick a new show to go over or, or do timeline to go over, and then fill in with other things for uh, for a for yeah a for a while. Um, so yeah, that, uh, that will be, that, some of that will be next week, I believe. Hopefully. Okay. Hopefully. We'll see. We'll see how it plays out, of course. You know, being that these are all pre-recorded live and not, you know, we don't do a stack of them and then release them. Right. Uh... Sometimes things change. Schedules change. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, that's the that's. I guess that's it for this week. Uh, now is the time on. Oh, don't forget to stick around for the raid. Yes. And now is the time on the show when I say, as they say around here, two up. Two down, VA double deuces. We're out, y'all. <laughs>